Good afternoon, or morning, wherever time it is, uh, wherever you are that, uh, when you're viewing this. Uh, my name is Rick Pasek. Um, welcome to my bench. Uh, today I'm going to be tying a, uh, a blob, actually a fab, a foam arsed blob. So that's what I'm going to be tying. Uh, I'm not going to tie that exact color combination. The one I'm going to tie today is going to be an orange uh, like this, and then a, a lighter orange, almost a, a yellow on the front, <clears throat> but with a yellow butt. So that's what I'm going to be tying for you today. Uh, in my vise today, I've got a, uh, a fairly large um, uh, hook from uh, Hens. It's the uh, BL599 from Hens, uh, size 8. I've got a larger one in just to make it easier for you to see. Um, I tie these anywhere from an 8 down to a 12. So to start, I'm going to start with Zemperfly wax thread and a 6 lock. Uh, you can use wax thread, you can use nano silk, whatever you whatever works for you. Uh, you want a fairly strong thread here because you're going to be tugging a bit. But so I'm just going to put a nice nice base layer down. So for the uh, for the uh, the arse, the foam, I'm going to be using uh, it's a Zemperfly uh, booby foam. So there's a selection. Of colors you can get so today I'm just going to be using yellow now obviously that's way too big I don't need it that big so I'm going to cut it roughly in half then what I like doing is just sharpening the one point for a tie end so I just nip it down into a taper just for a tie end point so drop that that's what I end up with. So my tie-in point is going to go there. And right where the taper ends there, that's where I'm going to start tying it down. Nice and fairly tight. If you're using like a uh, GSP thread, be careful. You can really, you can uh, tear this foam off pretty easy. So I'm just going to get that nice and secure. I am doing fairly tight wraps here. Just want to get nicely covered. And then I'm going to go right back to the foam. And I'm going to go in behind it, and behind it, over, and behind it, and behind it, and over. I just want that to be nice and tied in. Okay? See how that's tied in? And you see how it's actually kind of depressing right into the hook there? Right in the bottom there, it's depressing right into the hook. It's kind of what you want. Okay? So once that done, that's done, you got to figure out which way do you want to go. Today, I'm going to be using these two colors. Okay, and both of them are, um, uh, where did I put it? Where did I put the package? They are, oh, let me see. Oh, right here. <laughs> of course. They're from Flybox. This is a uh, fire orange. Uh, it's a gel core fritz. Uh, this is also from Flybox. I can't remember the name uh, of the color. I don't have the package anymore. But, yeah, so you can find this, find this stuff all over the place. This happens to be... The Flybox uh, gel core, you can get Zemperfly has it, Hens has it. Uh, the, the, so many different companies make this now um, as these blobs have become more uh, common, especially here in North America. I mean, they've been common for many, many years in, uh, in the UK, but here in North America, it's, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say a new phenomenon, but uh, within the last 10 years. So... I strip away the core. I want the core to be stripped away, so I've got a nice tie-in point. I'm going to lay that on the hook. I'm going to just catch that core in all the way back right against that foam. I want to be right against that foam that I tied in. And then just bring this forward about, about halfway, maybe a little bit more than halfway. And now I'm going to stroke this material back every time I turn. And you want to pack this in fairly tight. It's going to feel really tight and messy as you do it. Um, it. At least it can. But you want to be right up against that last turn. Right? You want it nicely packed in there. So two. That's three. That's four. Probably get at least one more. Yeah, one more. And don't let go of it like I just did. Let's go back. Get it nice and tight. Then obviously lock it down in behind, behind, 
behind. Always, I always do three behind. Stroke everything forward, all the materials. Sorry, back towards the hook. And then just again, right down to it. You want to be nice and tight. You see how I've gotten tight right up against that that foam, uh, uh, that the, sorry, the uh, gel core. I want that nice and tight. Then just go in there and find the core of it and snip it away. You see how that's see how that's nicely packed in there. That's what you want. Okay. If you have to, just can wet your fingers just a little bit, just to get it all to lay back nicely, and then finish building a bit of a base there. Okay. So now I'm going to take my next color again same same thing strip away my my core tie it in by the core with a loose wrap or two there we go and then all the way back right up against that last set and bring this right up to the eye I always just give it a whip finish here because when you're packing it in near the front you can have a tendency to knock it off so just give it a whip finish so it can't go anywhere so again I'm just going to take this material and I'm just going to wrap it same way I did before nice and tight though right nice and tight up against the next one and nice and tight up against the next one so there we go so that's my I only got three turns out of that so three behind three in front try to find the the actual core so it's not so hard on your scissors cutting everything there you go this stuff does have a tendency to like dulling scissors so and I stroke it back even if you have to wet your fingers a bit I'll try to keep my fingers out of the way there it looks like it's a little bit out of focus I'll try to focus that in for you guys there you go so again stroke that back and just build a bit of a head here now with this orange thread it's giving me a bit of a hot spot is what it's all it's doing but again you just want to make sure you stroke all that material back as much as you can once this is in the water, all these little things that are sticking out will lay back. So there's that. Let finish. We'll return. Do another one. Make sure everything is being held back. If you get trap stuff, just back off. Not a big deal. Okay. Nice and tight. Is there anything? I'm not. Can't quite tell if there's any little stragglers there. Nope. It's kind of hard to see when you're when you're trying to tie for a video here. But yeah, no, it looks pretty good. So now I'm going to take my my brush, clean out the dubbing, <laughs> and just give it a bit of a brush, just to make sure there's none of these fibers are trapped and then I'll brush it all back again you definitely want to use to, to save the fish you want to use a wide gapped hook on these things do not tie these on a narrow uh, small gapped hook or a regular gap hook you will they will swallow it and they will get injured so try not to use anything with a narrow gap you see how this these uh, these hens have a really wide gap Let me show you one again right so it's got a nice wide gap on it and that's what you want um, there's several different ones the 599 and the uh, what's the other one that where that uh, hens has that's really good for it the 510 is pretty good as well so um, it's a nice wide gap but you just want to make sure you use a wide gap hook for this so um, again, many ways to fish these. Um, I know I love fishing them on a fast sinking line uh, and then getting them right down to the bottom, as well as close to the bottom as you can. 
Uh, I don't use too long of a leader, usually about five feet, four feet, something like that. Uh, maybe six feet, depending on the, the water. If it's, if it's really super clear, uh, you might want to go a little bit longer so you don't spook the fish. Um, and then, yeah, just rip and strip this thing and be erratic. Um, strip, 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 pause. Lots of strips, pause, strip, pause. Uh, just be erratic with it. Um, it uh, sometimes I just even let them hang. They, they, they do represent Daphnia really well. Uh, the Daphnia uh, uh, bloom, or whatever you want to call it. Some people call it a Daphnia bloom. Uh, it, but it's, it's, it's when the Daphnia get together, uh, they get these blobs. And that's why these are called blobs, because the Daphnia get together in, the, in these big blobs. And quite often when you see Daphnia in, the, in a throat sample of a fish, and it's been slow fishing, fire one of these things on. They, they do work really well. Um, a lot of colors that, uh, the colors that I really like, I like this two-tone orange. I like this orange with the chartreuse green. Um, depending where you are, I know there's a few lakes uh, around where I am here that uh, the tiger trout love these things in just pure black. Um, and there's others I've done really well with straight chartreuse. So um, just experiment with them. And they're, they're really easy, simple to tie. Um, you can tie up a lot of them really quick. So enjoy. Um, try these at home and see how you like it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, you can look for me on Instagram and on Facebook. Uh, the Fly Fish Fanatic is my, uh, my Instagram uh, uh, call name. And uh, as well with my Facebook now. I just It used to be called RP3 Fly Fishing, but uh, I think we just changed it today. So we just changed it over to the Fly Fish Fanatic just to keep it all consistent. So, alrighty, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a, a message. Thank you. Tight lines.